Do you ever want to monetize the IBOE, International Bill of Exchange, and you want to know how to do that? Do you want to put that into a private placement program? In this video, I'm going to show you how to do that. You've got to watch this. I'm Tamer Zaman from LanaCred.ai. My organization is a world-class leader in providing structured financing around the world to corporations. We help issue as well as monetize various banking instruments like documents of credit, IBOEs, uh, stand others, credit like that, as well as helping corporations participate in trusted private placement programs that pay out. One of the frequently asked questions I get is, Tamer, we have an IBOE. Uh, can you help monetize it? Today I'm going to show you an actual real case study. I'm going to show you a real IBOE uh, client of ours is a former bank executive. When I mean former bank executive, I don't mean a bank teller, I don't mean a manager, I mean a former executive vice president of some of the top 50 banks on the planet. Uh, he contacted us with a client uh, with an IBOE who wanted to monetize it. So I'm going to show you the actual case study of what we did, how we did it, and so on. Before I proceed, I want to give you a legal disclaimer. LanaCred.ai, we are not a law firm. Therefore, I'm not going to provide you with legal advice. We are not your accounting firm. Therefore, I'm not going to provide you with any accounting advice. And we're certainly not financial advisors. So I'm not going to provide you with any kind of a financial advice. The content I'm going to share with you here is strictly for educational and entertainment purposes. I look forward, or I hope that you get educated as well as entertained. <laughs> Uh, so a little bit about uh, working on files like this. The first thing you always want to do, at least we want to do, is know what the end outcome is. So when a client says, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, whatever it is the client wants to do, we always want to dig a lot deeper to find out what's the end goal you want to go in. In this particular case, the client wanted to participate. Their end goal was to participate in a private placement platform that they would want us to bring to the table that you know we know we trust that pays that awesome so for confidentiality reasons i'm not going to talk about the real uh, value of the instrument uh, but rather i'm going to share with you the case study how we went about doing it how much people make money how they go about making the money and then what are some things for you to consider should you want to monetize an iboe uh, IBOEs generally gets involved, gets started when two parties need to uh, do transactions together and they need the bank to be able to provide some kind of a guarantee about, about the transaction happening in a nutshell. Uh, for the purpose of this conversation, a lot of our audience are, uh, do, are not, tech, are not edu they're educated, but they're not bank savvy. So I'm going to be using or dumbing down a lot of words. For instance, asset managers at banks, I'm going to use the word third-party appraiser simply because the word third-party appraiser makes a lot of sense to people. Once I start to talk about commercial banking and you have to talk to asset manager and you have to give them an IBOE, it just becomes a little bit confusing for somebody who's not sophisticated in the banking world. So disclaimer number two, I'm going to use terms that are incorrect are not accurate. I'm using these terms intentionally so that a three-year-old kid can understand the complicated world of banking. I would love to one day do a thesis on inefficiencies efficiencies of banking. <laughs> but right now I'm not doing that. <laughs> so, an outcome. Uh, get a client into a private placement program. Okay, any of the real, real, real private placement program platforms where you're um, putting up a hundred million dollars or more are generally speaking are, are matching that contribution every month. So client that puts up a hundred million dollars, gets hundred million dollars every month, they get it for 10 months. And by law, you can only participate in a private placement program, not once, but twice. So that means the total amount you can get is $2 billion, hundred million dollars a month for 10 months. And then you, you can do this again. So the total outcome is $2 million. So the end goal, for the client is how can they get two billion dollars? You want to have a very specific languaging, specific like that, two billion dollars in a in a period of let's say you know a few years. Awesome. 
So that's the end goal of where we want to take the client. The question becomes, how do you trade one piece of paper called IBOE? Because all it is is a paper, IBOE, and convert it into another kind of a paper called cash so that it can go into a private placement program and produce two billion dollars. That's the magical trick. I shouldn't use the word magical trick. That's when you want expertise and experience to help participate in doing that. Um, so uh, private placement platforms take cash. Everybody loves cash, 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 cash. Some platforms will take instruments like MTNs and standby letters of credit. And what these people do is they will monetize it or leverage companies like ours to monetize it. A lot of brokers will, joker brokers will try to go, okay, oh my God, I didn't know about that. Let me go find a line of credit to help monetize it like that. But the end of the day it needs to turn into cash. So how do you turn a piece of paper called IBOE to cash? So um, what we did was with this IBOE, we, you want to verify it. You want to make sure that there's a serial number to this. You want to you know, get a, whatever instruments you need to look at, platforms you need to get at to verify that the instrument's real. Awesome. Once you've done that piece of it, the next part, this is a key part, is to take the IBOE, you want to go to your bank or any of the top 20 banks on the planet and you want to talk to commercial blending and I'm going to use the wrong word, get a third party appraisal from the bank to give you something called safekeeping receipt, SKR. There's a fee for this. Making money, you have to put up money, pay money to make money. Let me say this five more times. For you to make real money, you have to put up real money. A lot of brokers don't understand that. A lot of entrepreneurs who read cheap, who've never earned more than a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars in their life, just simply don't have the whereabouts, the brain power to understand. You have to put money out of your pocket, even if you lose it, you have to put money out of your pocket so that you can make real money. I can say that in English. Unfortunately, I don't speak any other language. So, uh, you know, please excuse me. But you have to put up money to make real money. So, you take the IBOE, you have to verify if they're real. There's an ISI number to these I, I, IBOEs. You know, there's, you have to verify if it's real. Then you go to any of the top 20 banks. You look for the asset manager. I'm going to use the wrong word. You look for a third party appraisal within the bank to give you appraisal on the value of the IBOE. And you're looking for SKR, safekeeping receipt. The safekeeping receipt will have the value of the instrument for what the bank agrees as the value of the instrument. You take the SKR, you then go to a monetizer like a private equity firm like lineofcredit.ai. You give us the SKR. We then go and get, turn it into cash and help take that cash in a private placement program. So it's a four step process. You have to verify the IBOE. You have to go to your bank and get SKR. SKR has to be monetized. Monetized amounts goes into cash in a nutshell. Now let me tell you about fees so you understand the cost, timelines and so on. So once you have an IBOE, you've got the IBOE, awesome. You now want to go and contact your bank if you want, to learn, you want a company like LanaCredit.ai or you want to work with a joker broker to help you find a bank, that's perfectly fine. Do that. Get somebody to help you if you don't have an account one of the top 20 banks to help go get your account, whatever it is. But the owner, the keyword, the owner of the SKR, not a joker broker, is the, only, the owner of the IBO is the only person on the planet that's legally allowed to get an SKR because they are the owner of the instrument. I can't make that more simpler than that. You go to a bank, you say, I'm looking for a safekeeping receipt for this asset that I have. The bank issues the S SKR. The, the value is in the credit rating of the bank. Let me say this again. The value is in the credit rating of the bank, the issuer of the SKR. So let's say the SKR is, let's say the assets were $300 million. As an example, bank gives you a SKR for SK, uh, uh, safekeeping receipt for 300 minutes. Awesome. Then you're looking for, like a line of credit, AI will bring a lender, institutional lender that will look at the paper and will say, okay, how much cash am I willing to give up on this? And the lender will say, institutional lender will say, I'll put up $100 million for this piece of paper. So what's in it for them? is if the borrower defaults on $100 million, they own an asset that's worth $300 million. The institutional lender is not doing this for free. 
like they're charging a fee to even provide a term sheet for that. So these things are not cheap to do. And SKRs or IBUs is one of the most, it takes a long time to monetize an SKR, a long time. You know, we don't we don't work necessarily on the TLN with line credit. We are a private equity firm. We're like a law firm. We charge an hour rate. If you want $2 billion, we're charging an hour, hourly rate to help you even get there as well as a percentage of my account. But that's the years of experience and expertise that we bring to the table. So you now have to get a SKR, safekeeping receipt. Safekeeping receipt has to go to a lender. Lender has to give money against the safekeeping receipt. If you, the borrower, the owner of the SKR, the owner of the IBU defaults, the lender keeps the SKR, that keeps the actual asset. Now when you have the cash, you then go into let's say like credit.ai or you go to any of your competitors and say i have cash on a participant private placement program and that's how a, if you have an IBOE that's worth let's say 300 million dollars turns into 100 million dollars cash which then goes into a private place program and gives you two billion dollars in two years like that uh, i hope you found this helpful if you did please like it share it subscribe to our channel for sure i want to answer some frequently asked questions one question i constantly get is how come our competitors have litigations against them and we haven't the truth is well i have the truth is i have two answers my corporate answer is as a ceo because we operate with a level of high integrity transparency trust and all that all that corporate jargon is what i should be saying but my truthful answer to that is that is, is simply as a function of my lack of vision every large corporation whether it's ford motor company or time or whatever if you look into their history if you look at the income statements of these corporations you will see that people have litigated against them growing an organization to a massive scale unfortunately as litigation is just part of doing business so if our competitors have litigations against them i don't want to say please don't hold it against them but i have no, i don't have any other answers to that I feel you should always judge somebody's character and listen to your intuition. That's my answer. Whether it's you want to do business with us or somebody else, listen to your intuition is my my answer to that kind of thing. And the guy has litigations against him. Like, what does your intuition tell you? Um, this next question I get is, can you get paid only in the back end? The answer is no. We are a private equity firm. We're like a law firm. The minute you engage us, we, we bill on an hourly rate. Uh, there's a lot of fraud going on in the industry, you know, out of 150,000 IBOEs, one is real. And so I don't want to be wasting my time and resources, team times on monetizing fake instruments or participating in fake deals by charging some kind of a nominal fee for a years of experience and expertise. Uh, I find that it kills the junk leads for sure. It takes, you know, the market we want to serve are entrepreneurs and brokers that demand expertise, brand, transparency. They want trust. They want to have a partner that they can close with. And that's what they're paying us money for. And we are available a resource, just like a law firm like that. Uh, my name is Tamar Zaman. I hope you found this information helpful. If we can be of value to you and help you monetize your IBOEs or other assets, uh, please have a CIS KYC ready. Remember, you need to put up money to make money. So have proof funds. Uh, you have to have a copy of your instrument for sure uh, and then book a consulting call with us once we understand what your end goal is we'll give you a service contract we'll give you mutual nda and ca whatever for you to sign once we get engaged we look forward to working with you thank you so much and uh, look forward to the option of helping out We're just really thankful uh, to even just come across the line of credit.ai um, and Tamor, thank you for uh, uh, giving us ideas as far as what we need to do uh, to uh, get our business acquisitions off the ground. Um, the route that we need to take in negotiating, uh, that way we can uh, uh, 
uh, hit the ground running. So we definitely appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you. Well, yeah, no. Do you yeah, see a good I, pathway for making money that you didn't see before the call? Yeah, yeah. I, I, and again, I I mimic uh, Chinese answer to to be able to uh, spend this time with you, uh, and um, it's like we were a movie movie star. But it, at the same time, to 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 be able to sort through this, like like hear us say it, but then you can kind of pick stuff out of it by certain things that we said. And 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 uh, and then source money that we wasn't even thinking about, or a solution, and now we can go back to the seller and and pull money, or or, or let them see it in a way that's really uh, someone who might be risk adverse, and then say no, this is actually something good, and then uh, we can try that, and then come back, and then um, actually build a, a long term relationship with you, and actually help others. So. Uh, we're very excited with this and working with you and uh, the Rich Uncle um, platform and uh, exploring some other financial vehicles as you talk about in your uh, video. So this is going to be exciting. Okay, Thank so you. Richard, who are you and what have you got out of uh, working with me, uh, either on this call or on the materials I provided? My name is Richard Kane, and I'm working on raising capital for projects uh, throughout Africa. Uh, humanitarian infrastructure uh, projects and some renewable energy projects. Um, so I was just recently introduced to the concept of private placement programs and I'm far from being an expert. So uh, thanks to Tamar, um, I've been guided along that path and I now understand the process much better. Um, thanks for that. Uh, and also I'm I'm now familiar with the different routes I can take in moving forward and also the work I have to do uh, before I can move forward. So I'm really grateful uh, for the time you've spent with me and guiding me in this way. And um, hopefully uh, we'll speak again soon. Thank you. Awesome.